Hey everybody, Justin Queen here with Fish Ohio Outfitters and today we're tying up some pike flies. All right, we're gonna tie up a uh, beast slash game changer fly. Um, this one uh, you could easily fish for pike or muskie. Uh, I'm gonna tie a slightly downsized version of it. Um, so either a smaller musky fly or a pretty standard pike fly. So the materials that we're gonna use is an A-Rex uh, TP610 hook in 4 aught. Uh, I have some 20 millimeter shanks from Flyman Fishing Company. I've got some Nightmare Musky Flies Titan dubbing. I have some 25 millimeter shanks that I'm gonna use to connect the rear of the fly to the hook. Some EP Sparkle in Pearl and some Bucktail. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with a 20 millimeter fly, in the, or a 20 millimeter shank in the vise. And I've got some 150 denier gel spun. And we're just going to dress that shank all the way out. I think a lot of people see big flies and get intimidated by the size of them. And there's really no need to feel that way. Um, they are not particularly difficult to tie. Uh, the one thing that I will warn you of when you tie this fly is to make sure that you really go extra sparse in the rear of the fly. Pick out the amount of bucktail you think you need and then cut it in half, maybe even more. So we're gonna tie that in with those bucktail fibers facing rearward. And because this is a pike fly, you guessed it, uh, I'm not shy with super glue and I won't apologize for it. All right, we're gonna grab a little bit more bucktail. And one of the great things about this particular style of fly is that if you don't have good bucktail, no problem. You really don't need good bucktail. I actually don't recommend you use good bucktail for tying this. So this one's gonna go in in reverse. We're just gonna squeeze and pinch that bucktail to force it all the way around the shank and then pull tight. And wrap back over the butts right into that wet glue. It'll make your fly darn near bulletproof. Grab my push tool. Now working on the shanks can be a little irritating sometimes because you can't get a good grip to pull the bucktail back. Just take your time. Now the flare on this is going to be almost non-existent for the first two or maybe even three shanks. I actually even wrap ever so slightly back over it. <clears throat> just to keep it from flaring out too much. And then I'm gonna grab my EP Sparkle and we're gonna pull out just, I mean, a wisp of this stuff. It is very, very fine shredded mylar-like material. And how it goes on isn't that important as long as you get it on there. It just adds a little bit of sparkle and gives it that fishy look. We're gonna whip finish. thread free, tag it with a little glue, and attach our next shank. And it's a lot easier to attach that if you leave it in the vise when you do it. So there's our first section complete. Again, very, very little flare to the bucktail. Clamp that one down. Grab my bobbin again, get that shank dressed with thread. And this goes really quick once you get started. So all we're doing is tying on another shank and then another stack of bucktail, another shank and another stack of bucktail. So this one just a little thicker, 
Then the last, get rid of my short fibers. And because you're using shanks, each tie-in is gonna end up being about three quarters of an inch in front of the next one. And so by the time you're done, it staggers the bucktail exactly as you need it to as you go. Three loose wraps, pinch it and force it around the shank. snapped loose on me there. We're gonna have to do that one again. If you pull too tight and your thread is quartered up and rounded, that is exactly what will happen. Um, it just, it shears and cuts right through that hollow bucktail. So, grab another section. Be a little more gentle this time. two, three, chase it around. Hold tight. Make sure you got a good even spread. little more sparkle and repeat and it's that simple that is the entire back half of the fly that's a way too much flash Repeat this for four shanks. So here is the back half of our fly, <clears throat> all white bucktail and sparkle. You can see how sparse that is. You should be able to see through it just about. I know a lot of times on camera, things look a little denser than they are, but there really is not a lot to that. So we're gonna lay that there just for a moment and we're gonna secure our 4 ot TP610 in the vise. Uh, the Kona, I believe it's the BCG. Uh, would also be a fine hook for this application or Partridge Universal Predator. I like this one just because it's a little beefier than the Partridge, but the Kona or the TP610 would definitely be my go-tos. I probably favor the Kona, but the TP610 is what I had today. So we're just going to dress the whole shank of the hook and I'm making kind of cross-hatch thread wraps as I go back and forth just to get those to kind of lock in on themselves. And I like a pretty hefty thread base here. I'm not shy with it. And I attached my 25 millimeter shank to the back half of my fly. And I'm just gonna lay it on the side of the hook nearest to me. And I don't bother to cut that eye off. You can if you want to, if it bothers you, feel free. And now I just go through and I Put lots of thread wraps down. And the more I put on, the tighter I start to reef. I kind of have to hold the hook, otherwise, like I start deflecting the whole vise around the table. 
until I'm about right there. We're gonna lock it in with just a little bit of glue. We're gonna give that glue just a second to set, get dry. I'll actually run just a little bit more thread over that. And then I'll just kind of run my fingers over it real quick to clear off any wet glue that's left. So back to my white bucktail. Um, we're going to tie them in a little denser now, each section of bucktail. And then towards the end, we're going to do just a little bit of color blending to kind of tie this whole thing together. So nothing changes as far as how we're tying it in. Everything is still hollow tied with the exception of the actual tail, that first section that we tied in. Lay that right down on the hook shank. Two, three. Chase it all the way around the hook. Make sure you got it nice and evenly distributed and then cinch down tight. On the hook, we're gonna tie each stack of bucktail down a little closer together, but not too much. And you can see how just progressively the flare increases as we move forward. I'm pretty happy with that right there. It'll relax after we give it a good rinse. <clears throat> and the pattern doesn't change now that we're on the hook. It just gets a little closer together is all. And if you feel better about using a 6 aught with this, by all means, you're not gonna hurt anything. I like the 4 aught. I think it's appropriately sized for pike. And judging by where I'm at on the fly right now, I'm trying to decide where I wanna start to introduce some color. Um, and I think we're gonna I think we're gonna do one more stack of yellow, or one, one more stack of white rather, and then um, we'll start blending in some of the fluorescent yellow and red. I'm a big fan of this color combination. I just mix a little bit of red into one of those last sections. It just gives it that kind of bleeding gills look. Now, we're gonna do a section of fluorescent yellow. I'm actually not really crazy about this bucktail, but we're gonna make it work. Just trying to isolate what I want, not take too much or too little. There's a lot of short ones in this. See, that was a deer that was trying to keep warm. Lay that stack off to the side, and then we're gonna clip just a little bit of our red free, not very much at all. Lay that right on top of the yellow. And then just like we did uh, before, we're gonna blend. So I'm gonna rip stack them out. Pull it out, stack it on top of itself. Pull it out, stack it on top. And I'm gonna do that until I feel like I've got a nice even blend of bucktail. Drop that into my hair stacker. Pull 
pull out the runaways. I always get a little more than I think I actually need uh, for this and that's fine. And I love the way that red and chartreuse look next to each other. I just think it's so cool. And then the last section, I'm just gonna do the fluorescent yellow. I only want that red in there just as a little accent piece. It looks like I'm cutting a ton of this off the hide, but when I'm done, you'll see, I mean, there's just, there's so much short hair in this particular bucktail, and that's fine. Um, once again, like I said, when we started the video, this is a perfect way to use your not so great bucktail. Take your time and just get all of that junk out of there. We only want the longest pieces. So last stack of bucktail, one, two, three, wrap it up, spin it around, get it distributed nice and even, cinch down, just like that. Force that back. And then I'm gonna clip that back and out of my way. Reach in and grab my uh, fluorescent yellow Titan dub. Now when you take this stuff out of the bag, I'm gonna pinch in my left hand and hold the bag tight. And then I'm just gonna grab by the tips of it and I'm just gonna start pulling pieces out little by little by little. And what that's doing is making sure that they're all aligned really nice and even. And it makes it a whole lot easier to tie it in. And I want a pretty decent little clump of this stuff. Once I've got it in my hand, I'll even reach over here and I'll grab the longest pieces and kind of realign it. This Titan dub is just awesome stuff. I'm a big fan of it. And we're going to tie it in about 50-50, I guess. And I take it and I just kind of force it and wrap it around the hook shank and then really loose three wraps and then cinch down and let that thread suck in right behind the hook eye. Just like so. And then we just kind of take it and fan it out and spread it out as even as you can. It's a little ratty to work with and that's, that's fine. It's just, that is what it is. Find a way to get your thread through there however you can. And then we're gonna whip finish. Glue down our whip finish. Get our clip out of the way. Maybe. And then the last thing that I want to do here, if I can find it, there it is. So we're just going to take this comb and I want you to start at the ends of that dubbing. Don't go straight to the hook eye. Start at the ends, and then I want you to work closer and closer to the hook eye as you go, and just give that stuff a good little comb out. You're gonna lose some material, that's not a big deal. Trust me, when a rat pipe grabs a hold of this thing, you're gonna lose material that way too. And just give it a good, healthy comb out to get all the materials and fibers moving in the direction that you want them to go in. And that, is a pike size changer beast fly. Um, I love this color combination. That tiny little accent of red, I think really does make a difference. It's got a nice bright fluorescent yellow head and uh, this thing dances and moves in the water like you would not believe. Um, this is my absolute go-to pike fly probably 90% of the time here in Ohio. So thank you so much. 
I hope you tie some of these up and fish them yourself. Uh, let me know how you do with them in the comments section. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the water soon. Have a good one.